The word is getting around town that I like to fix things. I reserve the right to say no, but for some reason I never actually use that right. This clock came into the shop the other day. Uh, it's a Westminster chime. I think it's a German mantle clock, probably 1940s. It's got some problems, and I said in a weak moment that I'd fix it. Hey guys, Chris and the Ultimate Recycler. I seem to have a lot of weak moments. Uh, the the complaint with this clock is that the door hinge is broken, well, partially broken, so we have to solder that up. And the chimes apparently don't wind past a few clicks, which makes me think they're fully wound and it's not unwinding and driving the chimes. And he says they only work a couple of times and then it doesn't chime for the rest of the week. The actual clock mechanism, the time, appears to wind and work well and keeps reasonable time. So it's something to do with the chimes. Uh, let's get inside and have a look, but first we'll look at the door and see what's involved there. Now it's a quite a attractive um, clock, as I said, I think it's probably 1930s or 40s, and it's typical of the mantel clocks of the era, timber case, and they usually either had a German or an English movement, and there's definitely some issues with the door, I can feel, yeah, it looks like the bottom hinge there is, yeah, it's, it's they're normally soldered to the bezel, and it's obviously let go. Could be a bit awkward to get into. We're going to have to take the glass out. So, yeah, that's going to be a bit of a challenge. Um, I might pull the movement out first, and that'll make uh, it easier to manoeuvre the case around and look at how we're going to fix the door. Um, I think we'd actually maybe have to take the clock face off as well. But we need to take the hands off to get the movement out, and we're going to have to do that to inspect the chime mechanism and see what's going on there. So I've just found the pendulum in the back. Uh, I don't have a key. Well, he didn't supply a key, but I'll have one here. So let's lay the clock on the front, on the towel, so we don't damage anything. And what do we got here? Oh, just a little note, probably about where it was purchased. But it doesn't give a date. Um, just from an antique shop. So maybe it's not a family heirloom. Maybe it's just one they purchased from an antique shop, which is fine, but most people get... Uh, because of the expense of getting clocks fixed these days, most people don't worry unless it's a family heirloom and it means a lot more to them than just monetary value. Uh, a clock like this, even in good working order, is only going to sell for around about $150 or so, maybe $200 if it's a slightly better one, but they don't bring very much money anymore. So I'm just taking the chime rods out so we can access the movement gives us a bit more room and reduces the weight of the clock. All right, we can't take the movement out yet until we take the hands off the front. So hopefully the door will hang there okay. Uh, the minute hand is hand held on with a little, little nut, which generally undo just with your fingers. They're not usually very tight. And that just locates on a square. And the hour hand just presses on, and usually you can get them off with your fingers. Oh, this one's particularly tight. There we go. You don't really want to get screwdrivers under there because you end up scratching the face. Uh, if it doesn't come off with your fingers, there's issues, and you just need to be very careful. All right, so that will do for the front. We can now remove the movement. And we have a few screws holding it into the wood case. And this is where a magnetic screwdriver is really handy. <clears throat> Unless, of course, they use brass screws. And there's one brass screw in here. It's not normal. It must have been a replacement. In which case, we have my wonderful magic pliers that I found in an unboxing not that long ago. You may remember. These things have been absolutely fantastic. Love them. Okay, that should be enough to remove the movement. There we go. All right, we'll set that up in a minute and have a look at what's going on. Let's check the door out first. Now, I think we're going to have to take the dial off, which looks like it has little nails. I always put a bit of blue tack on the door here, probably to hold it closed, because with that bottom hinge gone, it would have dropped a little bit. Don't know if blue tack's such a good idea. At least not so much of it. 
All right, how are we going to get these little nails out without scratching the timber? I've used this um, vintage watch back, uh, watch case back opening tool for all sorts of stuff. It's very, very good steel. I don't know where it's made, but it's very thin and it's very strong, possibly a homemade handle, but it's been a really handy tool as well. So I think if we just get under the edge without scratching the timber too much, we can lever up a little bit and it won't leave any marks on the outside. It will mark the timber a little bit underneath the face, but that shouldn't matter. It's just a matter of working our way around here and hopefully we pry the nails out. Oh yeah, that one's lifted. The nails don't go in very far. They're more or less just locators We're going to have success here. See, they're only quite shallow nails. They do, of course, hold the face to the clock, but it doesn't need a lot of attaching force. Uh, hang on, we've got our, um, I guess they're called escutcheons for the keys. We may have to release those from the inside. I think they're holding the face in. Oh, they are, and they're all flared. I think they'll be fairly soft and easy to bend the tabs up. Yeah, really soft. All right, we'll have to just take those out. Well, that was easier than expected, actually. The um, the metal on these little eyelets, perhaps, is so soft that I can bend it with my fingernail, so they were really easy. We should be able to reinstall those safely, and they clearly go a long way to holding the clock face to the timber cabinet. We'll keep them in order just in case they're a slightly different size. That one appears to be attached to the face. That's okay, it can come off with it. Back to our gentle prying. And there we go. And the last one, these bottom ones are a little bit tighter than the top ones. Now, really tiny marks to the varnish won't matter. A little dab of metho will melt the shellac, uh, and if you carefully smear over it quickly, you will, the marks will completely disappear. But I'm certainly trying not to mark it. There we go. That's pretty good. We will get a, give that a quick wipe over with metho. Oh, sorry, you've got some bad reflection going on there. But it's got the clock face off without any noticeable damage. Those last two marks there will disappear with metho. Okay, there's our clock face. Let's inspect the hinge. And we need to get inside here, and it looks like it's been soldered. Now, that's just that's just blue tech in that spot. But it looks like it's been... Oh, no. Is that blue tech too? And he's certainly, yeah, he certainly jammed a lot of blue tech in here. We'll have to clean all that up. Uh, this side does look like it's been soldered, and that's the side we need to get into. So I'm going to have to melt that solder, and maybe that end too, and that end. So those three sides have been soldered. Um, this side looks like it unclips. It does. Okay, so we can now get the glass out of the road, which is good. We don't want to break that. It's a curved glass. Perhaps we can just bend this up. Actually, we'll break the solder. We'll bend it back and forward a little bit. It'll break the solder really easily. And that'll be easy to line back up and remelt that solder. A little rusty. And the hinge. It only has a quite a small tab here. And it definitely was soldered. Yep, I think we can solder that back in quite successfully, actually. Let's clean it up a little bit first. So I just cleaned up the area with a little sanding disc on my Dremel, just to take it back to nice clean metal. And again, these little spring-loaded pliers are proving useful. And I've just clamped a small brass screw there, uh, just out of my junk box. And that will hold the top of the hinge flat onto the clean metal 
and I've got my big old soldering iron uh, heating up here. I'm going to use a little bit of soldering fluid and we should get a pretty good solder joint on that hinge. Now the tip on this iron is nearly too big to get in here, but I think we'll be right. It's soldering quite well. Now we should be able to remove the little screw now that was holding it down flat. And the solder has actually crept underneath it, I think, which is great. You get enough heat into it and the solder will track under. As long as we don't solder the actual hinge pivot, that wouldn't be any good. There we go. I don't want to heat it so much that it melts the other end because we'll lose our nice, our nice flat hinge. I think that's pretty good. And there we can see our soldered hinge. I just went over it again and it's... um. Very solid, that won't come off again, not in the near future. I'm not going to touch the other one, it looks looks pretty good. And the door appears to close nicely and he shouldn't need the blue tech anymore. Let's get the glass back into it and then solder the uh, retaining piece in. Now let's give the glass a quick clean. And fit the glass back in the bezel and now we need to work out which way this goes and solder it in so the door actually clips over this side and then three dabs of solder so we'll just put a little bit of soldering fluid here and then we can just seal those solder joints up and everything should be rosy well it would be rosy if it stayed clipped in we might have to clamp that somehow. That should hold it in position. And now just to clean up some of the flux with some IPA. So the door is now successfully repaired. Let's have a look at the solder. I think you can see that. So it was a bit of a bit of a gap to bridge in the middle, but it filled in nicely. It looks nice and neat. Looks original. And the door operates beautifully. It has a bonus, it's even clean. Can't do much about the face, unfortunately. I don't want to touch the face. I, mean, I like that they look at, they look their age, but a lot of those marks are from fingers moving the hands around over the years, and it's actually started to take the original surface off, surface paint. So I'm not going to touch that. That's staying as it is. But we've fulfilled our first job of fixing the door. And it should clip nicely now. We shouldn't need any blue tech. So the next step on this job is to work out what's going wrong with the chimes here. So a quick look over the clock and I can't see any... Oh, hang on, what's going on there? That's interesting. There's something white and sticky on that little gear. Okay, that's the, I don't know what it's called, it's a, like a regulator for the chimes. So we're definitely on the chime circuit here. And there's, there's some sort of white gooey something on that, that gear. Now, I don't know what that's doing there, but that can't be good. It's very sticky. Well, upon further inspection, someone's done some home lubing with what I think is grease. I just wiped that off some of the linkages. It's, uh, I don't know, it's black as well as white. Uh, it's on the back of the hammers for the chime. And it's on a few of the cogs and the, some of the linkages in here. I'm not sure if you can see in there, but it needs cleaning off. You do not grease clocks. You oil them with the correct oil. Uh, grease is just gonna just gonna cause problems. We're gonna have to clean this up somehow. I might take the hammer mechanism off <clears throat> and uh, maybe look at just giving the whole movement a good wash in petrol or some solvent. I don't want to completely dismantle it, even though that's probably the best thing to do. I told the guy I wasn't going to give it a, a full service because I don't have the time and and it's not worth spending the money on. He didn't want to spend too much. But I think with a good washout, we should be able to uh, free up 
whatever problems that grease has caused. I can see a big lump of it in here. Yeah, I, I actually think once all this grease is out of here and it doesn't stick it all together, the chimes might well work. So I'll give it a wash up as best we can and then probably re-lube it with some clock oil. Can't see any damage. I can't see any issues with the clock otherwise. But it's just all this... All this terrible grease is gumming things up. So I've got this movement mounted in a vise now, just between two blocks of wood, uh, just on the mounting brackets, so I'm not squashing any of the movement. It's running quite well um, with no pendulum, but it's ticking fine, and they said it was still running fine as far as the clock goes. Now, I've been moving the chimes through their paces, and at quarter past, it'll do one quarter of the Westminster chimes. And then if we move it around to half past, it does half of the chimes. And it appears to be working okay. Now, I've wiped some of the grease off spots that I can get to it. But this tells me that there's no damage to any gears or any cogs. It seems to be going right through its cycle properly. This is three quarters of the chimes. And if we come up to the o'clock position, you can see it does that pre-warning movement first and now it should do the entire chimes and it'll also count whatever hour it's up to so it's still doing the melody and then this other gear will kick in and we've now got the strikes so that's two three four five six seven eight nine o'clock so the mechanism's working fine. I can't see any issues. There's no badly worn pivots. There's no damaged gears or cogs. Uh, I think its issue just is that someone thought it was a good idea to grease it. Um, so I'm going to have to wash that out as best I can. I can't submerge the whole movement in petrol like I've done previously. It's not the right way to do it, but it's a bit of a cheat, a bit of a hack if you like. And it doesn't do any harm. as long as the clock is not subjected to any solvent that's going to leave a residue, and as long as it's re-oiled again properly. It's not the best way to clean it. You can't get into the pivots properly by doing it that way, but it does get a fair amount of the gunk off. And it's got quite a bit of black. It, it really does need a proper dismantle and, and clean up and a proper service as such. But I haven't got time to do that, and he doesn't want, the owner doesn't want to spend very much on it at all. So I think I'll just try and wash the grease out as best I can, particularly from any areas that are going to load up the system and cause excess friction just from binding it up when the grease dries out. Then we'll just re-lube all the points with some clock oil, put it back in the case and give it a test. And that might have to do the guy. Um, it's just a budget job because that's all he wanted to do. And uh, sometimes you've just got to cut a few corners. There's no point in me giving it a complete dismantle and service because it would cost, in time, it would cost me a lot. And if I was to charge that out, it essentially writes the clock off. So these are the uh, compromises we have to make. Um, so I'll get to get some petrol and wash it out as best I can with a fine brush and a little bit of compressed air. I'll have to do that outside so that we don't get volatile fumes in the shed. And then I'll just reel all the pieces that I can get to. Hopefully we can get all this yucky grease off it. So I've given it a really good brush down with some petrol um, and a very fine, long bristled brush. And it, it's going to get all the grease off all the gears. Uh, I don't think the guy would have got grease into the pivots, so I think they'll be just old oil. But some of them did look pretty black. Um, now I can't submerge it completely in petrol because there's enclosed springs and we don't want them to soak up and fill up with fuel. Uh, as I said previously, it really needs completely dismantling and, and cleaning up properly, but this will get it going. And I think that's all that the guy is going to be uh, hopeful for. And I'll tell him that if he wants to keep the clock and keep using it, it needs a proper service and he'll just have to spend the money on it if he wants to keep the clock going. But anyway, I'll take this outside now. You can hear the air compressor um, going in the background. 
I'm going to spray this off outside where I have good ventilation and um, and then we'll just re-oil all the pivots and you do not oil any of the linkages, any of the gears, really just the pivots and just a tiny dot on the each side of the pallet where the clock actually ticks and tocks and that's all we need to lubricate. And now to re-oil the movement which is just the smallest dot of oil on every one of the pivots and I do notice that cleaning them out these larger movements cleaning them out with the air compressor may sound a little bit agricultural but it actually blows a lot of the old oil out of the pivots I just noticed that little shaft's got a bit of wear in that hole um, but that's fine they're fairly forgiving these big big uh, clock movements but probably the worst thing you can do for them is over oil them or oil them with the wrong lubrication such as grease. So I'm fairly confident I've got it pretty clean. So I'll just put a dot of oil on all the pivots on both sides and a little bit on the pallet. And we'll reassemble it and we should be good to go hopefully. So the movement's all uh, re-oiled and I'm satisfied that it's not in too bad a condition really. And I think it should run fine now. What am I looking for? Just a rag. We're just going to give a little bit of methylated spirits uh, to the finish here, just to take away a couple little scratches and clean up where the face was before we reassemble that. And we don't need very much. And the metho actually melts the um, shellac finish. If you leave it in one spot too long, it'll actually go sticky, which we don't want. So you need to work fairly quickly and just wipe over it and you can see those scratches it does take scratches away and we can just touch up any other bits of the cabinet that look a bit scuffed um, we'll just do a little bit more where those little scratches were but you want to wipe it fairly evenly otherwise you'll start to remove the shellac and then when it goes sticky you have a bit of an issue I think we'll leave it at that that looks as good as what it was it should dry nice and evenly now sometimes it does dry a little bit cloudy so we shall just put some beeswax over it and that will bring it back up to a nice finish and protect the timber as well so we have to put the face back on because remember the those escutcheons for the key winders have to be folded over at the back and our nail holes should line up and really we're just pressing them in we're not hammering them i'll use a, a small punch just to make sure they're they're nicely um seated but even though they're nails you don't hammer them in like a nail we're just reinstalling them into the holes okay we'll just seat the nails and there's our door. We will need to adjust the edge here just to get it to clip closed. But we can assemble the, um, we can install the movement now and we'll do that later. I've only put the minimum screws in the movement to hold it in place just in case I have to pull it out again. Uh, I'm going to leave it run like this without the hands on. I'll just put the minute hand on perhaps and leave it run for a few days just to make sure that the chimes are actually going to last longer than a day and they seem to be working fine we'll just turn it around to something o'clock i'm not sure where we're up to So that's three o'clock. It sounds pretty good. I mean, the chime hammers probably need adjusting, but I'm not going to muck around doing that. It'll take me too long. Uh, I've left the pendulum off and I'll leave that off as well. It's ticking away beautifully. Um, the pendulum just slows the clock up to normal time. At this rate, it's probably doing an hour every 15 minutes. I'll leave it run for uh, maybe a few days like this and just make sure the chimes keep up and everything else seems to work. Uh, a clock will run fine without the pendulum. It just runs fast. 
Okay guys, the clock's been running for about four or five days. It's keeping pretty good time. You might have just caught those couple of chimes there. The chimes are still working, but they're very slow. Now they should really do a week. Um, so after four days or four and a half days, it's quite slow. Um, but we're going to call this fixed anyway. Probably the next step, rather than a complete dismantle, is I did uh, forgot to mention that the actual mainsprings in this movement are removable. You can't actually see it from this side. So the main springs can be taken out separately rather than separating the plates. Uh, but I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to pull the mainspring out for the chimes and pull it apart and clean the spring up and re-lube it because it all adds to time. I'm only going to charge the guy about 60 bucks. He didn't want to spend much more than that. We've fixed the door. We've cleaned the movement well enough for it to run quite well and he did say his wife tends to wind it every second day so it's going to be perfectly fine until he perhaps decides to get a major service on it um, you may notice a couple of pieces of board i've got one end my workbench isn't level and that brings the clock to level and it's running beautifully so i'm going to give the guy a call and he can come and pick his clock up and he should be happy with it it's a budget job but it's a successful job um, and it's not like the clock would have been thrown out. We haven't saved it from landfill, but we've done a repair enough to keep the clock going. And it's a viable repair rather than taking it off to a professional clock restorer who would basically either do it and charge you an absolute fortune or say it's not worth doing. So at least this way, we've still got a, a an operational clock the guy and his wife can enjoy for hopefully many years to come. It's going to need a major service at some stage though, and I will be letting him know. So thanks for watching, guys. Hope you got a little bit of enjoyment out of that. It's a fairly long video, but clock videos tend to be. Uh, we'll catch you in the next video. So thanks for watching. Bye for now.